a list of scholarships here at present, so you can tell them that I have one scholarship from somewhere, and I'm just needing for like half of the scholarship from your Fulbright school, from, from Fulbright, and they can offer you that also. Um, academic honors and prizes, teaching. This is general things you like, look, you write to them, and one of the so this is two things: study research objective and personal statement. There are the main uh, <coughs> game players. They can help you win the scholarship and they can help you lose the scholarship. Uh, why it becomes more important here is that whenever you actually let me show you in most of the in most of the applications in most of the applications you apply for you only have to write a person statement person statement in those cases is mostly your research statement or your achievement statement okay so you are saying that okay I did this, I did this, and I want to do this, that's why I want to come here, that's the that's personal statement. But when you break into two things, personal statement and study research objectives, it becomes more difficult and more tricky. So, uh, let me just show you the file that I want to show you. So we already covered this thing. Uh, Okay, this is a, if anyone is starting your PhD or you are actually even thinking about starting your PhD or you have just started your PhD, please go over this PDF file. This was written by a teacher in CMU, applying PhD programs in computer science. It's an excellent thing why you should do PhD and why you should not do PhD. What should you expect from PhD and what should you, what you should not expect from your PhD. Uh, one other thing I really like is a personal statement given by this, this is like page 9, so let's go there. So you should go over this PDF, it helps you understand what's a GRE, how to give a GRE, what's a personal statement, how to write a personal statement, what kind of funding you can look into, what kind of funding you should go for. So uh, the link is there in the, in the PPD, but uh, you can you can look at this link also. Okay, so this is they say about the personal statement. It's a research statement, not a personal statement. And that's how your personal statement should look like. The first paragraph should describe the general areas of research that interest you and why. This is helpful for a committee to determine which professors should read your application. Second paragraph and third paragraph should describe some research project projects that you work on. And fourth paragraph, tell us why you feel you need a PhD. So you can replace this paragraph saying why you think you need a Fulbright scholarship, or why you think you need to go to the US to study your to study for your uh, for your area. Okay. And finally, why you want to come to CMU? Uh, this becomes irrelevant, but you can say like why you want to, what you can give back to your country after coming here and studying here. So in this Fulbright scholarship or any exchange student scholarship, they are not looking for the people who have a great GPA or who are extremely, who know they feel extremely well. I mean, they, they are looking for the people who are good in their field, but as such, they are good in friendships also. They are good in leadership qualities, or they are good in communication, or at least they can they can enjoy the other cultures and they can enjoy the other things. They can they want to experience other things, and. One of the components they will ask you again and one of the questions they will ask you again and again is that what's the benefit of US to offer you this scholarship? Okay? Why US should offer you this scholarship? Like what you can bring to US, what US doesn't have. So you can always say that okay, in front of them I said that I'm prepared for Pakistan and right now the current situation depending upon there's a there's a kind of a miscommunication, there's a level of misunderstanding between the two and the part of the world I'm coming from, the East and the West, we can always share something. And then they ask me that what you, what do you think you can bring from the U.S. If you send, if you send you to the U.S., what you can bring from the U.S. to your own country, and then you have to pick up uh, what you. So never become cheesy. You don't have to say, okay, I will do this and I will do this and I will change the world. No, no, be realistic. That okay, I will learn something and I will bring that experience to this country. For example, the greatest thing I like about America is individualism and as well as 
help anyone from any background can achieve anything in this country. So I want to bring this that thing to back to my house, to my country. So uh, you can pick up anything you like about America. Like higher education is extremely high. Uh, research is extremely on the edge here. So you can say that I want to bring that research back to my country. So it depends upon. But they will ask you again and again this question: Why do you need this scholarship? Why U.S. can benefit from, the, from this scholarship giving to you? And what your country can benefit if you give this scholarship to you? Okay. Uh, So as is, uh, most of the tough part, they take most of the time, write them, read them, and re rewrite them. This is a cycle. Uh, grammatical mistakes are the one of the most common mistakes we make, actually I make, and so this is the most frustrating part if another one, someone is reading, this is the most, most uh, so, so he will not judge you on the basis of what you have written, but like what kind of grammatical mistakes you are making. Always correct them. Don't write too much, but don't write too little. Uh, let others read. I mean, I I gave my application to my advisor. I mean, they have a very small time, but they have a huge experience of evaluating the uh, papers and evaluating the research <coughs> cards. So it's always better to let let them have a look in, in, in your application. Personal statement is not your life story, but it is your highlights. But highlights should be selected on the basis of how uh, why they are important. Okay. So for example, here it gives a very nice actually that. This is the call of boy genius, and they give, say that why it is not a good application. So when I was a boy, my mother gave me a glass ball to play with. I would play and look at prisms, prisms of light shining through my ball. At AC, my father brought home a one first overclock computer, and I disassembled it and then put it back together. So they say we don't care about what you did in, in your life when you were five or ten years old. They are looking for what you did in like past three years or past four years. Um, having said that, there's always a funny way of putting all this information. So you can you can put you can write something and then jokingly say, "Oh yeah, but I disassembled something in my when I was five. So uh, opportunity to escape discrepancies. First statement: You should tell that. So you have a bad GRE score. Uh, you might be having something going on at the time. You were working the two jobs. You are doing something, so it's, it's the best time to tell them that why your GRE scores became bad, or why your certain grades were not good enough, okay, or why you failed in one particular area, or why suddenly in between one year you didn't <coughs> took any courses and went somewhere and then came back. So this is a time and opportunity to explain to them why you did something that that can that can someone can looking into record can see oh oh suddenly he, he he disappears for one year from the academic institution. And then comes back. You can tell them, oh yeah, I was working somewhere, doing my job or something like that. Okay. Um, so this is a very good opportunity to tell them that you create what areas you like and why you like them. Okay. So uh, yeah, I followed this advice. You should go to the grad school talk by Moore, Harkel, Bettler, Belter, CMU. Uh, go. So what I love, what I think helped me was. I went over the personal statements of people who applied before. If you find some friends who have already written the personal statements and already have gotten in the scholarship, go over the personal statements. Grant, same thing, but more related to your research. Why your research? Why this area should be interesting to you? Okay, and why this grant should be given to you? What you have done in this area previously? Uh, so, for example, I started my. I I don't have a research statement right now with me, but. I started that like why I was so I started telling them that I went to a one science expose and there was a, someone was having a computer program there that was doing a face detection and face recognition and you pass in front of that and they can detect your face and like uh, I was in like FSC at the time like twelfth grade and I just became excited at what computers can do for you. Okay, so that's how my first experience in computer vision was it that keep me going into this area. Uh, so, but uh, but after telling them that I told them what I was doing right now, so I was working with some computer vision guy at the time in Pakistan, so I told them that what, what kind of papers I'm studying and what kind of area I'm working on. Uh, so reading examples of research statements, so you can go and uh, go over other research statements. This is a webinar uh, at CIS.org.
<coughs> there are many webinars. You should go there. And there is one coming up. I think so. Crafting your firmware project statement. Okay. So you can go over this website and you can go over this uh, webinar. Okay. One of the last and one of the most important things is reference letters. Actually, not the last, second last thing is the reference letters. Uh, your teachers can write, and I've seen some examples in which actually teachers wrote in their reference paper reference letters that no, this person is not suitable for this scholarship or suitable for this program. So it's always better to discuss with them that what they think should you apply for this program or not. Okay, and uh, in US actually, you can ask your university to show you the reference letters in some of, in some universities actually. Uh, but most of the teachers will ask you to waive this right. Uh, so you can discuss with them, but you can waive the right, and then you can go. But you you need to be. You need to know the person from whom you are ex expecting a reference letter. You can't go. You can't go to a person who gave you a C or B in your in your course and expect him to write a good reference letter for you. But in a reference letter, don't ex don't. I'm okay. Again, uh, this PDF. I, I there's a part here. They very they so. So teacher who just tells them that this guy got A plus in my class, that kind of reference letters are not acceptable. Uh, you need a teacher that can tell them why this research is important or what kind of research is, this person is doing or what kind of uh, intellectual this person is or what kind of thinking process this person goes into. This person is hardworking, he works, I mean, he goes over the things, he go, reads his paper pro properly, he looks into the things more than what they are stating, he can, these kind of things. Uh, we have about two more minutes. Yes, I'm about okay. Transcripts, apply for them early, collect them, and interview. So after the initial screening, few of them are selected. Uh, you have to prepare for that. You can't expect to, to just go there and like perform well. But one of the most important things that is that feel comfortable and ask the questions. If they ask you a question, in the end you can ask them a question that what kind of things you can expect from a scholarship and what kind of results you can expect from a scholarship and things like that. And um, so that's it. They are not not only intelligent person but hardworking also. Mostly person who can go and make friends, person who is open to different, person with extracurricular and social activities. And one more thing, uh, okay, I think so I missed one thing here. But okay, whenever they ask you a question, take some moment before answering. Be sure what they're answering because okay, that's something I to. So I did my I, I work in computer vision. So one of my project was like detect taking a face and deciding what kind of a gender this person is from. Okay, and my project was gender recognition. Uh, so I so I put that thing into my application and they went over that and they asked me that what do you think about gen gender recognition? I started explaining. Oh yeah, no faces have. Different, uh, different kind of uh, features. Their jaws are different, noses are different, eye lights and everything and everything. And they, and they were like just looking at me and then they said, no, but isn't this a social science pro problem? And I was thinking, no, this is like, they were thinking about in terms of gender equality, uh, social science problem, not the computer vision problem. And then I recognized that we two were in two different worlds. So I explained to them that, no, I didn't work in social sciences. I work in computer vision. And that's the kind of work I do. So yeah, so we should know that what kind of the question they're asking, why, why, from where it is coming from. After that, I think so. These are some links that might be helpful. And we should back on. Thank you very much. So before, <laughs> so before we go, uh, any questions? Any question oh, yeah, to please. Boxen and uh, to Bess or Suchi? Oh, Suchi. Or myself. Uh, I think we're just like right at the time, so we're not going to be able to have you all introduce yourselves. But uh, take a look around. I would say that um, if you were here in this class, you have permission to talk to anyone in this group about anything that you want. You can ask them questions. Don't feel shy. Um, 
Uh, okay, so if someone comes to you and says, hey, I saw you in the international uh, grant writing um, session, and you want to talk to that person, you should say, yes, great, I want to talk to you, because unfortunately we can't do any networking in this class. Maybe later on in the day you'll have a chance to meet each other. Okay, so the next thing is happening back in the main room.